joining us now with the first reaction from the White House is National Economic Council Director Gary Cohn. Mr. Cohn, always nice to have you. Uh, some are disappointed by the number. It did come in uh, decently below expectations. Are you disappointed with 156,000 jobs? David, first of all, th thanks for having me. And uh, before I answer that, uh, you know, I just want to extend our thoughts and prayers to all those in Louis Louisiana and Texas dealing with Harvey. Look, if I had told you on Inauguration Day that I'd be standing here on Labor Day weekend and we'd have 4.4% unemployment and 3% GDP growth, I think you and I would be having an interesting argument. You'd probably be telling me those are very hard numbers to achieve. Are you sure you could get there? Well, guess what? I'm standing here and I'm sure we can get there because we are there. So no, we're not disappointed with those growth, with those numbers, and we're not disappointed at all. You know, remember, these numbers are just numbers that come out every month. We're looking at the trend overall. We're looking at job growth. We're looking at job creation. And we see a lot of very good um, momentum in the numbers. The one numbers that went down were government. We've always said government's going to get smaller. The private sector is getting bigger. We see job creation in the sectors we want to see job creation in. Right. Uh, I know we're going to hear about the, a lot about that 3% GDP number, particularly because President Trump discusses it with, in relation to tax reform. I would point out, as you well know, the final numbers on second quarter 16, GDP were 2.9, and the full year is still not anticipated to be near 3%. That said, let's get to tax reform if we can. Yesterday, you bumped into Eamon Javers in the West Wing. He asked you about it, and you said, quote, I'm optimistic. I think we have a reasonable shot. Why are you optimistic on tax reform, and what does it mean when you say reasonable shot? Look, I, I, I am optimistic, and I think we have a more than reasonable shot because we need to get tax reform done. If you listen to what President Trump said in Missouri earlier this week, he laid out what we need to do in this country. We need to be competitive. We need to get a business tax system that makes us competitive with the rest of the world. If we get a tax system that allows us to compete, we will hire people. When you hire people, you compete for labor. When you compete for labor, you drive wages. We need wage growth. We need job creation in this country. We've got to get competitive with the rest of the world. He also talked about simplification. We need to simplify our tax system. It's just way too complex for the average American to do their taxes today. We want to go back to a system where Americans sit down at their kitchen table and they do their taxes on a single sheet of paper. That's what we should have in this America. In America. It's not fair that people can't do their taxes, that they have to go out and hire a tax preparer, they have to go out and buy some software. We spend billions of hours doing taxes. We spend so much money doing our taxes. It should be very simple. The government shouldn't yeah, put through know, people through the stress. Gary, I want to be 10 years younger and six inches taller, but wishes don't always come true. I mean, you know, well, you're going to go up against the Congress and a Senate that may disagree. You talk simplification. Other people hear, well, that actually means cuts in particular for the highest end of the income bracket. Uh, that's going to be tough to pass, um, they, that's one not, would say. That, that's, that's not what we're doing. Look, simplification does not mean cuts for the higher end of the brackets. We can simplify and we can get rid of a lot of deductions. Those deductions actually affect the high bracket payers. So when you actually simplify the tax returns, you're actually affecting the high taxpayers the most. So we would not agree with that statement. I know that's the conventional wisdom out there, but in reality, we spend an enormous amount of time looking at this and modeling this. As you simplify the tax system, you actually reduce taxes on, on, on middle class income payers and average Americans, and you're actually taxing the high end at a higher rate. Gary, it's Sarah. Secretary Mnuchin told us yesterday that there is a tax package and it's being, I think he said, quote, socialized among members of Congress. What exactly does that mean? All we've seen is a one pager from your administration, which had some ideas out there, a statement of principles. But can you give us any more details about what exactly is being passed through Congress at this point that makes you well, so optimistic that it's going to go through committee and to the president's desk by the end of the year? Well, I, I think, you know, as Secretary Mnuchin said yesterday, he and I, along with congressional leadership, both in the House and Senate, have been working quite diligently and rigorously for the last four or five months. Really, we've been working since December on a tax plan. We've been meeting often. We've really agreed on a skeleton and a framework for what taxes need to look like. And we've got complete buy-in from the six of us on what the framework for taxes should look like. 
We're now working with both the Senate Finance Committee and the House Ways and Means Committee to really build out the skeleton, put the muscles on it, put the skin on it, and deliver a tax plan, which we think we can do because we've got complete buy-in from the six of us as well as the president. How difficult is it, Gary, to sell the notion that putting a corporate tax cut, corporate tax simplification at the centerpiece is going to translate into jobs? I mean, the research isn't all that great. You have after-tax profits of U.S. companies already been running near record highs, uh, and we have the job growth and wage growth that we have. Well, we don't have wage growth. If you look at what wages are doing, wages are running flat in the United States. We're 2.5%, so we've literally had flat wage growth. You think of the situation that we're in the United States today, where we have a, a tax system that charges, let's say, 15% or 20% higher than a European competitor. You start with a 20% disadvantage in taxes. So if you're a European competitor, you can charge less for your product, you can pay your labor more, and you can be more profitable. How can we put America in that position? We strongly believe that if we lower business tax rates, that it will translate into higher wages across the board. You know, but last time we had a repatriation deal, you remember that, you were at Goldman, I was covering it, of course. Look, they brought the money back, the beneficiaries were, were investors. I mean, it resulted in buybacks and higher dividends. It remains unclear to many, Gary, that the beneficiary really is going to be your middle class working person, as the president has pointed out, from cutting corporations' taxes. I get that they may not move any longer, and certainly we do need more competition. We hear it, I've heard it from CEOs for years, we all know that. But this idea that it really benefits the worker, how can you be so confident? So how does it not benefit the worker? Who owns equity in the world today? The big pool of equity owners in the world today are the pension funds. They're the biggest public pension funds are the biggest owners of equities in the world. You can talk to many guests you have on your show. Go talk to Larry Fink. Go talk to Fidelity. Go talk to the big asset managers of the world. They will tell you that the big owners of equities today are all the big public pension funds. They're the policemen. They're the firemen. They're the teachers. They're the civil servants of America today who have their money in public pension funds being managed in the U.S. equity market. So, yes, we're helping Americans by delivering returns back to them. Gary, wanted to move on to another project you're working on, the president's trade agenda. Is it true that the president calls you a globalist, as has been reported, and that he's demanding tariffs? Is that something that investors should worry about? As you know, tariffs can be growth killing. Look, the president and I have a very open and robust discussion on trade, on the economy, on economic growth, on jobs. We have a very good relationship, and we're always talking about ways to grow the U.S. economy and put workers back to work and increase wages. That's his mission. That's my mission. Uh, and finally, Gary, the Washington Post today reporting uh, that the president, and you just mentioned, of course, your relationship, is uh, quite unhappy with you in terms of an uh, interview you gave to the FT in which you clearly stated your opposition to comments that had been made, uh, at least, uh, involving the... Um, unrest in Charlottesville. I wonder, do you feel still that the president has confidence in the job you're doing? Are you concerned at all, perhaps, that your job at the White House is going to come to an end? I have a great relationship with the president. We're working well together. We spent an enormous amount of time this week working on taxes. We were out in, in, in Missouri talking about taxes. We spent time talking about taxes. We're going to be out next week tra traveling, talking about taxes. We're, we, he and I are spending time working together on all of the big economic issues that are going to drive economic growth and drive wages in this country. That's what he cares about. That's what I care about. All right. And a lot of that has to do with taxes. And I know it's going to be an issue that we care a great deal about because of our audience. Gary, thank you, as always, for your time. Look forward to, of course, catching up again as soon as possible. Gary Cohn joining us from the White House. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.